9.30 tonight. I've had a couple of busy nights, as you can see from my previous video. We had a family family night yesterday where we ended up burning our tree. It's a kind of our annual Christmas tradition, which is funny. It actually started because um, we didn't have a way for a while to take our tree to the place where the city collects them and takes them to the landfill. So we ended up burning it down, and chopping it up, and putting it in our trash, and that's how it started. So um, The kids loved it so much, though, that we ended up... Uh, doing it every year, at least when the trees are dry. Sometimes the trees aren't quite dry enough to light up, but that's fine. So what I did is I removed the elevators from the table. I still have some extra sprockets that I cut, so I plan on using these. Um, but what I need to do is I need to take these elevators apart. So I marked my elevator so I know which one goes where. And forgive the mess on the table, but I, I don't want to clean it up tonight because I don't have very much time anyway. So the goal tonight is just to get the all thread replaced because I need to make it longer. And I'll just show you the method that I go about doing that. So the first thing I need to do is to take these elevators apart. And unfortunately, um, because I have the sprockets on there, I can't easily take these off. So what I'm going to do is cut the sprockets off, which are not any good to me anymore. And as soon as I cut those off, I'll be able to easily remove the elevators. I wouldn't have to do that to get them out, but if I want to do it quickly, that's the best way. My cutoff wheel is actually too short to do this, so let me... Actually, I think I'll take it right over here to the chop saw. and easy. Now we'll just take these apart. So what I need to do now is separate this nut for on the end, which I, I didn't weld on. I just tightened it out, down manually by hand. So let me grab some tools. I'm going to take just a small piece of a round bar that I have here, tack it up. tack it onto the end, it doesn't uh, matter. As long as I don't get it in the threads. Get a good grip on this. And we'll take this out. Not that. I need my box end wrench. Can't remember if I have it up here. And we're going to loosen this now.
this is the all thread. That's why I said it's not that hard to change. You just take the all thread out. Uh, you can see I welded the nut on there. I just need to make the thread longer. So now we'll take apart the second one. thread for something else too so um, we'll take this longer one which was about 20 inches long and I think I'm going to cut myself a little bit of extra space just to make it uh, just in case I mess something up because I don't have enough all thread if I mess up again so we'll just make it how about we just make it 24 inches and call that good and then we'll cut off any extra that we have after we're all done so I'm going to cut those on the chop saw real quick Okay, so now we need to thread these nuts on. These are the ones that we're going to actually anchor on uh, with a weld. And we'll move it up probably, well, we'll just measure it the same as this one. I don't want any of my all thread getting cooked from uh, welding, so I'm going to raise the thread off the table with just another nut on the other end, just so that the only thing that I have touching and taking the arc from the welder is going to be the nut itself. And we're ready to weld this. Alright, so now what we need to do is feed these back in. And I'll go ahead and thread a nut on the bottom of each of these and this is what this is where we're going to sandwich these sandwich the um, inner race of the bearing again. And this I'm hand tightening, I don't want to weld it again in case I ever have to take it apart like I did like this like, like I did this time. This would be the better way to do this so you don't destroy the threads. Except I need my crescent wrench because I don't have two three quarter inch box end wrenches.
I didn't film the rest of this, of course, because it would have been too awkward, and I don't have a good uh, camera holder for this part of the garage. So, um, anyway, I ended up putting these back on. You can see that this all all uh, raw, this what do they call it? All thread is longer now, so I moved that sprocket down. This one, I put the sprocket back here again and added the second sprocket down below. And I'm just, I didn't put the chain on this one other than uh, this amount for visual purposes for you guys. But in this area, what I'm going to do is put a couple, two, three more sprockets, take up the tension on this chain and build a mechanism that will allow me to uh, hook a drill up to it and tighten, uh, raise and lower the elevators. One thing to note, um, I do have to take the slack up in this chain no matter what, and for that matter, the other chain. I do have a way that I'm going to do that based on something I saw on YouTube, so I'll show you that when I get that complete. But if I don't, let me show you what happens. If I don't, I can start rotating. I'm, I'm, I'm using the pliers because it's hot, because I welded it, the sprocket's on. But if I start to rotate this, you can see that I can rotate this one maybe an eighth of a turn. It, it tightens this chain up quite a bit, and then the slack is on that other side, right? Oh. Slack is on that side. So I have to take up the tension, otherwise the elevators aren't going to raise and lower together and simultaneously, and I can get binding issues, which is what I don't want. So I'll go ahead and rotate this back as soon as I put the camera down. It's too awkward right now with one hand. but um. That's the update for today. Tomorrow I hope to have more time. It's just been a busy week.